Hi all, welcome to Parker's Reefs. On today's episode, we're gonna review how I can add a bit more flow to my soft coral tank without risking any of my prized frosted rose bubble tip anemones. All right, so first of all, let's go back and uh, talk about why I wanna add a bit more flow. And that's um, because in my soft coral tank, which I'm super excited to show you, I don't get enough opportunities to show that tank in any of my reviews, um, has these beautiful frosted rose bubble tips in there. And um, uh, <laughs> as being as transparent as possible, they've been a fantastic little money spinner for me. They um, are breeding quite well in there. And I just wanna see what I can do to try and get them breeding a bit quicker. Um, and some of the things I've discovered so far is every time I uh, disrupt their pattern, whether I change the light or flow or food or do something, it tends to, in the short term, make them reproduce a bit quicker because I'm not a big fan of cutting in enemies. I'd rather let them uh, multiply on their own. So I've got this spare MP40 sitting in my fish room and I'm looking at it on my uh, Red Sea Max 130D thinking I could add that to it to just disrupt a bit of flow and also get a bit of uh, detritus out of the tank as it's uh, well over six, six and a half years old now. Um, and I just look at it going, yeah, but I don't want to mince up uh, any of those beautiful frosted rose bubble tips, particularly if they start walking, which is the whole idea of uh, adding them more flow. So um, enter uh, the Nemprotect, which is this key little device here. It's um, a 3D printed guard uh, for your MP40s. I think they also do them for Gaia's um, and some other pumps, but uh, I've got one here for an MP40 and um, I'm keen to put this on the tank and just give it a good opportunity to give this product a review. Um, and just see if it restricts flow, if it stops NEMS entering, if it still gives me the desired outcome by uh, hopefully getting my NEMS to reproduce. And um, yeah, we'll go from there. And um, as I touched on, we're definitely gonna continue with the process of giving three pros and three cons for every product. So um, let's uh, get this product out of the box and uh, see how we go. Okay, so this is uh, my soft coral tank here that we're going to um, add this flow to. And you can see, uh, actually you can see my dog out there hiding in a kennel, but uh, this is the tank that gets uh, pretty neglected, if I'm honest, and, um, but it has these beautiful frosted rose bubble tip uh, anemones in there. And I just wanna see if we can reproduce those uh, naturally. And um, I often find the best way to do that is to add a little bit more flow. So whilst this tank currently has a uh, Tunzi on the side, um, doing its thing, pulsing away, I have kind of feel like I've gone through all my options of changing the um, settings on that pump to uh, try and just disrupt things uh, peacefully for the uh, NEMS and making them reproduce. So I've got this MP40 that I want to put in the tank just temporarily, maybe for a week or two and see if we can get these NEMS to um, split and spit out a couple more because yeah, they're, they're pulling good money in for me at the moment. But uh, the age old problem with an MP40 is that um, you don't want your bubble tips to go in here and they get sliced up and well, obviously kill themselves, but also potentially wipe out the whole tank. So we've got this Protect here, which has been designed exactly for that. It's designed to, it's a wave, market, wave maker guard to protect your tank's occupants. This is exactly what we want to do. So um, let's get this open and uh, just see how it fits up. This is the first time I've opened this. So, um, so whilst you can tell it's um, 3D printed, there's no uh, hiding that uh, fact at all. It actually feels um, quite good quality and uh, the parts click together really well. And, I tell you what, I've got a 3D printer. Um, well, I had a 3D printer, it's uh, not in the best shape anymore. And uh, if I could produce items of this quality, I would have been super happy. So that's a good start. But let's see how this um, MP40 fits in it. You can see for starters, we're gonna end up with something quite a lot bigger than the MP40 in the tank. But All right, so first up, we've got our MP40 and we have our uh, Nemprotect, which uh, I'll put the box there so you can see the uh, brand. How do we uh, fit these items on? It's quite simple. There's your MP40, there's the Nemprotect. Here it clicks in, it's ready to go. And you can see that the, uh, the magnet actually lines up flush there. So I'll be able to install that onto the side of my aquarium and, and um, we're good to, good to just connect it up and run as per normal. Now, you may wonder if that sits flush and there's actually nothing to grab onto there, how do you get it out? I may have given that away before, but this front pass part actually unclips. So that just unclips and you can uh, push, it takes a little bit of force, but it does come out. That's how neat the fitting is, because that is only a uh, press fit. Um, it's quite impressive actually. Uh, so you can take that out for uh, servicing if need be, and then uh, the front clips back on again. As simple as uh, pushing that back on, you hear the click, and uh, that's connected, ready to go. So let's get this um, on the tank and um, see how it runs. 
All right, so um, I've got my uh, old MP40 and I've got uh, my NEM Protect here ready to um, install. So the process is really still the same. I'm going to open up uh, the tank. I'm going to sit this in there where I want it. We'll line up the uh, magnetic side. We're all good. And then uh, we should be able to connect power up to the controller and uh, see how we go. And we are off and running, and you can see it is blowing an absolute ton of uh, detritus everywhere. But um, it's working, and it's working quite well. I'm just going to move it further back. You can see this is an old spare MP40, and it is fairly noisy. But uh, that's cool. This is just a temporary installation. I'm just going to have a fiddle with the... Uh, setting that I want. And uh, we are off and running. I'm just going to sit that controller there for now and um, let's have a close up look at how this uh, NEM protector is in working in action. All right, so the first thing you'll notice is that it does um, stick out a fair bit larger than the uh, original MP40 wet side, but uh, that's to be expected. And uh, from the amount of detritus you can see that's um, blowing out there, I've got the MP40 because let's be honest, MP40 is a pretty large uh, power head on a uh, 130 litre tank, particularly when I've already got a Tunzi in the um, aquarium, but it's, it's doing what it's meant to do and that's disrupt the um, flow. In fact, you can already see my uh, frosted rose bubble tips there are, are reacting. Um, the uh, polyps are starting to, um, well, I say polyps, the, the bubbles are starting to retract in. You can see the um, body is puffing up. In fact, that one is um, it's moving before our eyes, which is kind of cool to see. So we're going to just see how, um, how they respond over the next week, and hopefully it'll spit out naturally another couple of NEMs. And um, if it does that without um, reducing uh, flow, if it does it without uh, mincing up any anemones or uh, catching any fish, I'm going to call that a huge success. So... Um, Let's give this uh, let's give this MP40 a week and um, see how things go. All right, so a week has passed and um, the uh, Nemprotec's still on the tank out there doing its thing and it's uh, it looks clean as a whistle, which um, I will point out that I have tried running um, the foam guards on MP40s before and. Um, on a tank like this that has this much detritus, uh, I would be lucky to get uh, maybe a day or two before they were absolutely chock-a-block full of detritus and starting to grow algae. So it's uh, still perfectly clean, which is great, but what's best is it, um, even if it was dirty, it'd be easy to remove and clean it. But the big question, has it minced any NEMS? No, thankfully not. Um, now, on first instances, you may think that not much has changed in the tank because we've still got uh, these uh, one NEM there, two NEMS there, and one up the back, but uh, when we look a little bit closer, the one at the back is split into two, which is fantastic. And in fact, the bottom one there looks like it could almost split again really soon. And then the uh, extra little surprise that I only just noticed, and I'll turn a torch on so we can try and see it. If I can spot him down there, just uh, up there. In fact, I'll switch the torch maybe to another way. Kind of hard to see, I'll get an arrow on screen, but just hiding under that rock ledge there, there is another NEM, which is exactly what we wanted to do. Wanted to just upset these guys enough, just with a little bit of a different flow, to get them to spit out another NEM. So that's been a huge success. In a week, I've uh, propagated two more NEMs, and like I said, these things sell for a uh, pretty penny. So that's um, quite a profitable week for me. And um, our NEM protect, NEM protect is over there doing its thing, safe and sound. No NEM's going to walk on that and get minced up. Um, so yeah, let's uh, go back into the studio and uh, give this a uh, final wrap up. All right, so uh, let's wrap this review up. And as promised, I'll go over my uh, three biggest cons of the product and three biggest pros of the product. And uh, I always like to finish on a high note, so let's start with the cons. Con number three, I'll go three, two, one. So con number three, uh, it's 3D printed. Um, they don't hide that fact. It's uh, made quite obvious that it's 3D printed, but when it's in your tank, because it's 3D printed, not like injection molded, people may think that you've made it yourself, which, I don't know, that may be a pro if uh, you're a DIY kind of guy or girl, but um, it does just have that 3D printed look to it. So uh, if it's in a really visible spot, it might look a little bit homemade. Okay, con number two, it's 
pretty big. Um, it, it being that it encapsulates the MP40 um, wet side, it ends up being fairly large in the tank. So if you've got a uh, tight space, that could pose a problem. Um, on the plus side of that, having a bit of room around the MP40 just really allows it to not inhibit any um, any flow. So I guess that's um, that's why it needs to be as big as it is. But uh, it's it's worth pointing out. I promise I'd give you three cons. So I will. And uh, lastly, the price. Um, these things aren't cheap. Um, whilst being 3D printed, the MP40 uh, size uh, Nemprotect does roll in at around about $60 Australian, um, which is fairly expensive. Um, that being said, I, I do own a 3D printer and I know uh, how much time and effort they take uh, to print these things out. Um, but yeah, it's $60 Australian. It's it's significantly more expensive expensive than those foam guards. So I got to list it as a con. Um, but uh, let's not dwell on the uh, downsides. Let's get on to the uh, pros. First of all, I'd like to point out that uh, it's just really. I know I said that the 3D printing side of it's a um, a con, but uh, pro number three uh, for me is the quality of the finish. It's um, it's a really nicely made product. The, uh, I'm quite surprised that it just relies on a press fit and it just really clicks in very nicely and um, fits flush up against that uh, the, the wet side, the magnet where it goes against the glass. It's just a really nice finish and the top that clips off so you can push it out and give it a clean, uh, it's, it's really quite nifty. Okay, pro number two is it just does not um, inhibit any flow. Um, it's got quite small holes on it. Um, which made me think it, it looked quite solid, so I was thinking it's going to really restrict flow. Um, granted, I did test it on a uh, fairly small tank, so most of the time I had the flow turned down quite low anyway. Um, but it just really didn't seem to inhibit any flow. It um, was quite a free-flowing unit, and it just didn't get dirty at all. Um, so despite having fairly small holes on it, um, which are great for stopping NEMS getting in there, it didn't inhibit flow, and it didn't get dirty, which is what everyone wants on a... Uh, on a wave maker guard, because like I touched on those foam guards, they, uh, the, the, of being foam, they do tend to suck into detritus and then they just grow algae and get dirty and they're a pain to um, wash. In fact, you have to turn them over every couple of days if you want to keep it clean and flowing, otherwise your flow just suffocates. The Nemprotect has been on there for a week um, and it's in a pretty dirty tank with a lot of detritus. In fact, I can still see the detritus floating around in the tank and it looks brand new. It doesn't, it's just not dirty at all. The dirt is not sticking to it. It's not growing algae. Happy days. All right, and last but not least, uh, my favorite pro of the product, the NEMs don't go in it. <laughs> I know there's no way to guarantee a NEM proof wave maker, but this uh, NEM protect's got to be as close as you can get. In fact, the holes on it are so small, I just, I can't see, even if a uh, bubble tip, one of my rose bubble tips walked over the NEM protect and a tiny little bit of it got sucked in, it would be the equivalent of a fish biting it. It's just not gonna kill the NEM. Um, and for that fact alone, that's my biggest pro of this product because uh, I've got a, uh, another tank, a Clown Harem tank, which I've had a lot of trouble picking wave makers for um, historically. And now also with my uh, soft coral tank with those beautiful uh, frosted rose bubble tips, I've been um, really hesitant about uh, changing the flow in there at all because my, my fear is that I'll wake up and um, one of the NEMS has gone through the pump and just uh, killed everything. And some of the fish I've got in that tank are uh, nearing up eight years old in my tank and uh, really are family members. So it's, it's just nerve wracking. Having a product like this opens up the possibilities of having bubble tips or other anemones in um, tanks with wave makers. So my main display doesn't have any uh, NEMS at all and that possibly could change now that uh, products like the NEM Protect exist. So um, that's my biggest pro guys. Um, I don't have anything else to say other than uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I've tried to keep it a real balanced, uh, real balanced uh, review. If you are in Australia and you're interested in picking up a NEM Protect, um, Nick from Aquabella will be at Reefstock um, coming up uh, in August in Sydney. Um, everyone else around the world, be sure to uh, jump online and look for your nearest NEM Protect uh, retailer. If you have any questions, be sure to pop them down below. If you've liked the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you've got any uh, feedback or questions, be sure to um, give me uh, some comments down there. Oh, and last but not least, um, if you want to see more videos like this, where I do some uh, more marine tank uh, product reviews, events, photography, um, tours of people's tanks, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification. All right, guys. Thanks. Bye. Bye.